Welcome to Live Doth, your online Doth Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Yemi, Tanis Tes Zainu, begin on the fourth line from the top of the Amit. In yesterday's Daf, we discussed the uh, additional efforts that were done during the seven last fast days, which were the most severe of them all. The situation was getting desperate, and they did all kinds of additional efforts to bring about, Rachmanas, to bring about rain, to alleviate the situation. Says the Gemara, Rachayiv Teva Vesakem Efer Efer Kvura Umuria Siman. This is a shorthand form of the next sugya, which will discuss these seven points. Lama Yoitzin Lerachayiv. That's the first thing. Rachayiv. We learned that they would leave the shul, go out into the city square to daven outside. What's the point of doing that? We have two pshat. Rabchir Bar Abba Amar Loimar. By doing so, they they were essentially saying, "Zo'aknu b'tzin lokui." We daven to Hashem in private in the shul, v'loy na neinu, and we did not elicit a response. Nevazat zmeinu b'farhesi. Now we're willing to go outside, shame ourselves out in public, to bring about the Yeshua, to bring a bracha. So this uh, exposure, this shame, would. Uh, Bring about hachna, submission, and tshuva, which perhaps will evoke rachamanus. Rish Lakish Amar, another pshat. Galinu. Look, we went out into exile. We left our shul. We're davening in the street. That in itself should be a kapora. Galuseinu mechaperes aleinu. Our goals, our travel, our going out into exile, that should be a kapora on us. Might be nayu. Is there any difference between two pshatim? Bezoyin or goals? There's a difference. The Golu, the Beknishta, the Suppose they would go from one shul to the other. Instead of davening in their own personal shul, they go to the next shul. So Golus, we still have. Well, they're leaving their, the comfort of their own shul, their own uh, social circle, their own setting, and they're going out into Golus. So Kapara, on account of Golus, would apply, but since it's still in a shul, it's a Makam Sina, you would not have the, uh, the element of Bezoin Befarhesya. So according to the first shadr of Chia, you need Befarhesya. A show would not qualify. According to Rishlakish, the point is Golas. In this case, you have it. Next thing. Why would they transport the Aron Kodesh out into the city square? By doing so, they were expressing as follows. We had a, a hidden, a Tsunua Kli. Aron Kodesh which was hidden in our shawl, in this bazar of Avinenu, due to our sins, it was now shamed, taken out to the street. And Rashi says, Vidui. This was a form of confession. Look, look what we brought about through our virus. Why would they cover themselves with sackcloth? The Yerushalmi, Rashi brings the Yerushalmi, they would cover themselves with sack, or to the Besak forest, blow forest. So that's what the Gemara is referring to. Why why cover with sack cloth which was made of goats here? To express as follows Due to our shortcomings, we're like uh, we value like an animal. Like a behemoth. We listen to our Yetzahara. This was a way of of confession of of, of confession of of vidui of tshuva. Why would they place the burnt ashes on the Aaron Kodesh, as we learned yesterday? This will send the following message. We're not alone. Hashem is with us. Hashem says, I join you in your hardship. Even the Aaron Kodesh, which contains the Sefer Torah, which represents Hashem, so to speak, it's covered in ashes. Hashem is partaking in our hardship. Shlakish Amar, another Pasak. For the same point, Bukhot Sarah Sam Loit Tsar. Hashem has Tsar. It's his Tsar when we have Tsar. Um Rabbi Zayra Mresh, initially Kiyava Khazina Lula Rabbana, when I would notice the Rabbana the Avi, Efer Mikla Gabiteva, that he placed the ashes on the Arna Kaj, Mizda Zea Likulai Gufai, my whole body would tremble from fright. Why did they put Efer? 
onto every individual's head. There's a machlekes between these two. Chadama, one explained. The reason is Hare Anu Chashuvin Lafenecha Keifer. We tell Hashem we have the same value as Efer. We're worthless. This was a way of doing Teshuva. The other one explained what is the significance of Efer of burnt ashes to bring about a, a positive effect. Hashem evokes the memory of, of Yitzchak Avinu. We have Ram brought an aisle, a ram, and burnt it instead of Yitzchak. And all along he would say, this is instead of Yitzchak. So this is a way of bringing Yitzchak, so to speak, as a carbon. This was the expression of Mesiris Nefesh. He was willing to bring Yitzchak instead he brought an aisle. So this brings, about the, brings out the uh, true feelings of Mesiris Nefesh that we have to Hashem. And hopefully we'll evoke Rachmanus and Schosim Nashemai. My Binayu, what is the difference between both reasons? If Afer denotes lack of value or denotes Mesiris Nefesh, Iki Binayu, there is a difference of our stump. Just plain sand, plain earth, has no value. So you have that point, but it's not associated with Akedes Yitzchak. Lama Yoytun the Beis Akvaris. What's the point of going out to the Beis Akvaris? On a fast day, in fact, Tasis brings. From here we learn that there is a minute, a point in going out to the Beis HaKvaris on Tisha B'Av. Sharei Tisha B'Av Havitana Sibur Kemoisho Yoisin Ben Pneak Shom Just as the Gemara mentions going out to the Beis HaKvaris during a Tana Sibur on account of a rain shortage. Likewise, B'Zman Hazer we go out to the Beis HaKvaris on Tisha B'Av. In fact, it's brought down in Halach. The Ramah brings it down. To try to go out to Beis Akvaris on a Yom Tamis. So what's the point? What's the, what are you trying to accomplish by going out to the Beis Akvaris? Again, we have two reasons presented by these Amiroim. Pligiba, there's machlek is between Rabbi Levi Bar Chama and Rabbi Chanin. Chadama, one explain. Harei Anu Chashuvan Lofnecha Kimesi. Similar to the svara that he gave by the Efer. Well, we're like Mason, we're valueless. Look what we did wrong. We have no value. We're trying to do tshuva. We misvada Hashem have rachmanus on us. We realize. We appreciate our shortcomings. I don't want to explain. On a positive note, The point of going out to the Beis is, is that the, the mason buried there should daven for us. So we uh, solicit their help, so to speak, uh, for our, our cause. Might be naive. What's the difference between the reason that we're not choshev, or the reason that they should be mivakish rachman? It could be naive. There's a difference. Kivri akum. What about a beis akvaris, which contains kivarim of non-Jews? We have the first time choshevim kameisim exists, but bakoshas rachman says Rashi. Well, they're not even royed to ask for themselves. Certainly not for us. So as Hesus mentioned, it is a minute to go to the Beis HaKvaris to visit the cemeteries on the Tainas Tzibur. And according to the second shot in the Gemara, Kadeshi Yivakshu Aleinu Mesim Rachman. It's a big tumult in the uh, Sfarim and the Paiskim. What exactly does the Gemara mean? And how do you relate to the Mesim? How do you get them to ask Rachman? Some say, well, you, you're not meant to. Durish ala Mesim, go and daven to Mesim. Others bring a raya. Where Kali ben Yifuna went to Chevron to Davin to be safe from the Atzas Meragum. So we see there is a, a concept of having the Schus of the Mason a help a person. So I looked around and I found four four aspects, four approaches to this uh, to this topic. Some learn that when we visit a uh, Beis Akvaris, which contains Mason, especially Tzadikim. Hashem will remember the schus of the tzaddikim and that itself will bring about rachmim on us. Others learn that when we dive into the Beis HaKvaris, although we're not addressing the mason, but the mason themselves will be misirated themselves and ask for us. The Maril writes, interesting concept, Beis HaKvaris is makim tar v'kadosh because it's makim menuchas ha tzaddikim, that's where tzaddikim rest, and therefore it is a makim mesugal, it's an appropriate place Place conducive for proper tefillah and acceptance of that tefillah. Tachsam Soifa brings, writes in a tshuva, 
that his Rebbe, Rav Mordechai Benet, not his Rebbe, um, Maram Benet, Bishas, when he was passing, he said when he passed away that if you have anything to ask, come daven by my by my caver, I'll help you out. So it's pretty clear that um, he was clearly saying that they should uh, ask him to help him out. So different uh, different shittas, different approaches to this concept. Uh, the Mepharshim bring that there's a nusach called Man Eloshan, composed previous diaries, where there is direct addressing of the Mason. We ask them to ask for us, to daven for us. So, either way, there is an Indian, there is a schus, to daven, a makam kvaris. However, it's meant to work. Continues the Gemara. We spoke about Misha Anna, as Avroma Vinu Bahar Haramoyriya. We're assuming Hara Maria is Hara Bayez. That's where that kid is. took place. That's where Hashem responded to him, promised him children, and there's Yisro. My Har Ha Maria. Why was it called Har Ha Maria? Once again, Machloek is Pligi Bar Reb Levi Bar Chama Rabbi Chanin. Chadama one explained Har Shiyatz Menu Hayra Al Yisro. Hayra, instruction, Torah, Musr was exported from that mountain. Rabbi is houses the Lishkas HaGazes, which houses the Supreme Court, the Sanhedrin Agdola, from which clarity was disseminated to Klal Yisrael. The hardest uh, Shilas ended up in the Bezna Godel. There were Nevi'im standing there who gave Musa to Klal Yisrael. Yotzim menu hayra'a Yisrael. That's why it's har ha-moyriya. Loshan hayva hayra'a. Moyre. Moyre, moyre, right? Loshan of instruction. The Chadama, the other one explains, the reason why it's Har HaMaria, Har Sheyatsa Mimenu Moira, fear, was exuded from that mountain, Lo'idei Kuchavim. Why? Because they saw the greatness of Kal Yisrael. They saw the Asura Nisan took place in the uh, Beis Hamidosh. They were gripped with fear, or Pachad, from Yisrael. Says Rashi, about uh, seven, eight lines up. Chadomar Har Sheyatsa Hira, Teira, Yisrael, Kimitzin Tete Teira. How did it bring about Moira? In fact, Tesis says that the word Yerushalayim is a joint word. Yeru, the Lashon of Yira, fear, which was exuded from Yerushalayim, and Shalim. He says, uh, look at the Pasuk. Barash is his Malchit Tzedek Melech Sholem. He was the Melech of Yerushalayim. So Yerushalayim is Yira of Sholem, of Yerushalayim. And that's why there's no Yud. Yerushalayim is not written with a Yud. And he says that's why, because it's meant to be a joint word of Yira and Sholem. Continues Rashi here. So the Oyed um, hear about the greatness of Yisrael, um espach demalem, shamati. Rashi means another pshat. Lishnachrina Hara Maria is not Har Habayis. It's actually Har Sinai. So why was it called Har Maria? For the same two reasons. So Tesis brings because there is a Hira with this Torah, which um, came from Har Sinai to um, to the world. I don't see it in Tesis, but that, that seems to be the Pasha Pshat, that Misham Yotza Hayra, right? Har Sinai was a source of Hayra of Torah. And Rashi seeks to explain the, the second reason. What about Moira? What is that connected? How is that associated with Har Sinai? So he says, Lishna Achrina Har Amri Har Sinai, Moira Lo Ebdi Kechavim, Bimatan Torah. Tachsiv Eretz Yorav Shakata. During Har Sinai, during Matan Torah, there was a, a fear, a Moira, a group the entire world. When they experienced the they were exposed and they were aware of the fact that we got the Torah and everything was was shaking about and uh, everybody was, was impressed and affected by, by Matan Torah. Okay, so either Har Maria is referring to Har Sinai or, according to some, Har Habayis. Now it seems that the Misha Anadla Varun of Har Maria that we mentioned in our Mishnah is certainly referring to Har Habayis because Hashem answered Avram Avinu on Harabayas. It seems that the second Pshat in Rashi and Toysis that it's referring to Harasina is just another way to explain Haramaria 
in general, Har Maria can be referring to Har Sinai. But of course, in our Mishnah, it is a reference to Harabais. Okay, continues the Gemara. Hazok and Shabahen, the older one amongst them, Imir Lefnein Divrei Kivushin. He gets up and he admonishes, he, he softens their hearts. He brings them to Teshuva. Ton Rabban, who's going to be the one to speak? We have a, we have a preference, a list of preference, of preferences. Im Yesh Shom Zokin. Let's say there's an older person there, Imir Zokin. He's the one to speak. But otherwise, Imir Chacham. A Chacham will be the one to inspire the masses. Vim Lav, if you don't have a Zokin or a Chacham, what's third best? Oimir Adam Shal Tzura. An Adam Shal Tzura should get up and inspire the crowd. Who's an Adam Shal Tzura? Says Rashi, off to the right. Adam Shal Tzura, Bal a tall fellow, charismatic fellow. She Ishmu be Kabul Dvar of Laham Rechas So appearance, impression, makes a big difference. You got a big person, a Bal to give a nice Musa Shmuz, he's going to have the right effect. Continues the Gemara. So you're giving me this order. First priority is Zokin, then Chacham, then Adam Shal Tzura? How does that work? Out to Zokin the Kamri. Your first choice is a Zokin. Afa Gavdal of Chachamu, even though he's lacking Chachamu. Just an old man without any content. How does that make sense? He's going to inspire the masses. Why is that first choice? I'm going to buy Hachikama. No, the Bryce are men like this. Im yesh zokin v'hu chacham. I'm a zokin. If you happen to have somebody with both qualities, he's older in age, older in years, and he's a chacham. Of course, that's the best. So he has the content and the experience and the prestige. That's number one. Right? Im yesh zokin v'hu chacham. I'm a zokin v'hu chacham. Right, so then we do... The zakin who is a chacham, vim la, but otherwise. So now you're faced with a choice. You can either use a, a zakin who has not much content, or a chacham who happens to be younger in age. So uh, which one's the pick? Vim la, oimer chacham. Better to have a chacham even though he's a bit younger. Content. Panemius is what counts. Vim la, if you don't have either a zakin or a chacham, oimer adam shot surah. So first choice is a zakin who's a chacham. Otherwise, it's a, a chacham. Otherwise, third choice is Adam Shal Tzura. But it seems from the Gemara that just zikna, just age alone, doesn't really uh, carry much weight. So what's he going to say? He says as follows, Achedu, my dear brothers, loy sak v'tanis gurimim. You know what? Externals, wearing a sack, fasting, which is relatively external, it's not a change of lifestyle. That's not going to do the trick. Internal change. Change of lifestyle. That's going to do the trick. As we find in Rather than the Pasuk saying Hashem took notice of their sack, of their fasting. What does it say? Hashem took notice of their actions. That's what's going to carry the date. That's what's going to make a difference. Internal change. Now, once on the topic of Ninve, we have another passage which says, So they don sackcloth, the Adam, and also the Behema. What were they trying to do? The Behema always wears sad. There's no... A significance to a behemoth wearing a sack. Terror says they did something which inconvenienced the animals as well. Asri, they tied up, they separated. Habehemus lachud, the mothers separately, the sabladis lachud, and the children se- separately to bring about tsar, even amongst the animals. Umru lafanov, they turned to Hashem, Riboyne Shalom, Imeinata Marachim Aleinu, if you don't have mercy on us, we're not going to have mercy on these animals. It says Rashi, three, four lines up. They meant as follows. Just as you tell us, to have Rachmanus on these animals, so too, have Rachmanus on us. Came to Racham Alein. Ben Yenoda asks, we're trying to blackmail, threaten Hashem. If we're not going to Racham on us, we're not going to Racham on them. Says Ben Yehuda, what they meant to say is like this: Why were the animals created to serve man, to serve us? If we're going to be destroyed, if we're going to be decimated, what's the point of these animals existing? 
If we're not around the world, there's no reason to exist. Hashem, you want a world. You want a Bria. Have Rahmanas on us and keep us alive. The Buzzard continues. They called out to Hashem with strength, with power. They presented some sort of argument. My Amr, what were they saying? The Amr of the fun of they turned to Hashem Olaf, Vishen Olaf. You have two people. An Olaf, tolerant person, easygoing, who's confronted by an Enoi Olaf, tough fellow, difficult to deal with. Or, you have two people, a Tzaddik, Varosha, Minitchem Epnemi. Who's going to defer? Who's going to give in? Who do you have higher expectations from? Of course, the Tzaddik. Of course, the all of the easygoing fellow, Kaviachal, here as well, defer. <laughs> Give in. Be mavater. Did the truth from their bad ways. And from the uh, thievery that they were involved with. Now, once they did tshuva, why does the Pasuk have to say, well, they gave back what they stole? You can't do tshuva otherwise. What's the repetition all about? Apparently, there's an added element the Pasuk is referring to. They went beyond the, the letter of the law. What do they do there? You're going to have a fellow stole a beam and built it into his house. They dismantled the whole house to return the beam back to its owner. Although, you don't have to. It's a takana. Chacham wanted to encourage people to do tshuva. So he said, in such a situation, you just pay the value. You don't have to take apart the whole structure. But they went the extra mile. The Flimir Shur sat in. They dismantled the beer, the large mansion, returned the beam. Asks the Chassam Seifer, what well, Takonas Marish only happened way later after Ninve. At their time, there was no, there was no uh, Takonas Marish. So when they have to return the beam. Some Saifa says based on the Ramban that perhaps the Gemara means that they were all easy going at that time. They were all doing tshuva and they were uh, mavata to each other and the uh, victim of this Geneva certainly would be more than happy to just accept payment and value rather than dismantling the other fellow's building. So Alpidin, he was potter, but they did it anyways. Omar of Adabar Ava If a person did something wrong and he does vidu but he doesn't Changes ways. Lemahu daima. What's it compared to? Famous marshal. La adam shatayfes sheretz biyada. A person grabbing hold of a dead insect, which is tummy. Shafilu tayva b'chol meimish b'el. Even he goes and he's tayva in all waters, all mikvahs. We all slay tefil. It's worthless. He's still touching the tummy. Zar kamiyada. As soon as he gets rid of it, kiyvan shatavol b'abra misa. As soon as he goes into a small mikvah, no river, no ocean, just a small pit. Miyad also slay tefil. Certainly that counts and it becomes Tahir. Shanemar. And this is compared to the Baal Tshuva. Tshuva only works with a change of lifestyle. Shanemar. He does Tshuva but he abandons his faulty ways. Yerucham. He will generate Rachmanus. Vaimer And the Pasuk likewise says, El Kapayim. El Kel Our heart has to go along with our hands. Rashi says, "Ima kapayim tzorach lisa halev la shemayim kolayim." Meaning, shiachsam kolkulei. Lift your clean hands up to shemayim. That's how you generate tshuva. Back to the Tanis. Om the batfila. So they're preparing to daven. Moiridin lefnei ateva zaken. They point a proper shliach tzibur. Now, what qualities do the shliach tzibur have to possess? Turn it up on. Om the batfila. Avo bishyesham zaken v'chacham. You see, the Zakim Vachacham was good for the, uh, for the Musr, to inspire the crowds. But when it comes to being a Shliach Tzibur, you have to be proficient and fluent in Tefillah. In fact, the Gemara Bracha says, if a Shliach Tzibur errors in his Tefillah, it's not a good sign for the Tzibur who he's representing. So who is meant to be appointed? Even if you have an older man, he's a Chacham. Ein Marid Nefnei HaTeva. El Adam HaRugel. You appoint a person who's ruggle, who's accustomed to davening, who's fluent, 
who's proficient in tefillah. The famous story with Rabbi Chaim Salvechik, there was a question of who to appoint as a shleach tzibur, big Talmud Chachem, but he had a hoarse voice, or a younger fellow who wasn't as chasha, but you know how to daven nicely, a sweet, beautiful voice. And they presented Rabbi Chaim with the shaylis, he says, look, I understand. Who's more chasha? Talmud Chachem, Yerei Shemayim. But all those qualities mentioned in halacha, that are required for Shliach Tzibur, that's if you have a choice. You're faced with a Shiloh. I have two a potential Chazanim. Both know how to daven. This one's a greater uh, Talmud Chacham. This is a more important person. It's less important. Okay, so you pick the fellow who has the added qualities. But first, you need to be a Chazan, he says. <laughs> the fellow who has no voice, is not a Chazan. He's not up for consideration. First condition is, be a Chazan. Of course, you take the fellow who can daven better. Who has a voice, who can sing, who can daven. That's that's the chazan. And then you worry about additional qualities. Likewise over here. Zakin Vachacham. That's not gonna do it. You need an Adam or to get to first base. He can daven. Now you try to get the best chazan. Rabbi Do Imer, Metupal Vainli. He's looking after his children. He has to fail them, young kids, he has to support, and there's nothing to give them. So now he's really into his tefillah, he's really devoted. Vishli give a sud, he has work in the field, he has a farm, no rain. Ube say Rakim, his house is empty, Perki Noah. The more someone explain. Ushfal Berach, which means humble man. Umerutza Laam, very important, Rashi says, Noyach Labrias, well liked fellow. Umaskimul Tvilosa, and they all go along with his Tvila. Vishla ni ima. He can dava nicely. Vikoile Urib, a sweet voice. Ubaki Likroiz Batoira, but if you he is an expert in the Psukim. Which he's going to say during his tefillah. Belishna is midrash, Balacha is is expert in Gemara and learning. He has prestige, he's Tamat Chacham. Ubaki, Bechala Bracha is Kulon. And he's an expert in all the Brachis. In order to say it properly. Vyavu be Rabbonne Nayu. Rabbonne set their eyes on a potential candidate who had all these qualities. Barabi Yitzhak Barami asks the Gemara. We seem to have a repetition here. Hainu Betubo the Engler. What does Betubo the Engler mean? He's looking after children, he has nothing to support. Hainu Beisarekim. It's exactly the next condition. Empty home, empty pantry. Why the repetition? Amar Chizda, no. Beisarekim means, Zeo Shabeisarekim mina Avera. His house is clear, clean. From any, um, any gazel, anything that's, uh, any, any dishonesty. What does Opirki Noe mean? Amar Abaye Zesha lo Yotzele Shim Rabbi Al Dusay. Even in his youth, he had a good reputation. Perak is a Lushan when he's a Bachar, when he's of marriageable age. Even at that point in his life, he had a good name, a good reputation. So he's good through and through. Past, present, hopefully future. The Pasuk in Yirmiya says as follows. Hashem responds to Yirmiya, who asks Hashem, why, why don't you respond to Kal Yisrael, to their tefillah? Hashem says, look, my nachal, my Yisrael, like a lion roaring out in the forest. No snow like a present their voice, but just a voice. That's why I dislike. My no snow like a what does this mean? Some say, Rabbi Bar Chama, Amar Rabbi Chama, Amar Rabbi Elazar. Speaking about a halacha, halacha number one, Amar Rabbi Chama, Amar Rabbi Elazar. Speaking about a hollow voice, without internal consistency. They present this beautiful chazan, beautiful voice, nothing, uh, no, no substance. No sound like a, like, a, like a lion roaring. That's why that tefillah doesn't carry weight. It doesn't have the proper impact. Okay, so getting back to the Mishnah, we have a total of 24 brachas during the Shemone Esrei of the Tanis. V'oim l'flame esrem v'abba brachas. Shemoyne Esrei Shebuchal Yom, the standard 18, O Moise Valayin, a Sheish, with an additional six. Ask the Gemara, what do you mean six? Hani Sheish, it's only six. Sheva Havyan. It's clear from the Mishnah that there are seven long brachas, not only six, because it's not al Shri Yusu Aimeh Barach Marachamal Aretz. Mishnah says, how do we end bracha number six? Long bracha number six, Barach Marachamal Aretz. So what do you mean there are only six extra brachas? Answers the Gemara. Omar Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchok, my Shvius. When we speak about the ending of the seventh, 
Shvisla Rucha, the seventh long bracha, the seventh expanded bracha, because really, the bracha of the, the six extra brachas were inserted where? Between Goyal Yisrael and Rafainu. Between Reva and Yenu, right? Baruch Hashem Goyal Yisrael and Rafainu Hashem. But the truth is that Goyal Yisrael, which speaks about the, uh, the topic of the day, we need a Geula, was also expanded. We took that opportunity to expand Goyal Yisrael as well. Although it wasn't counted as one of the extra six, but it was an expanded bracha. And then comes the additional six. So we really have a total of seven long brachas. The Sani Begol Yisrael, Marach. He would expand Gol Yisrael. Bechoisma, Oimer, how would he conclude the bracha? Mishana, as Avram, Bara Maria. Just like Hashem responded to Avram and Hara Maria. And Taisa says, What's the connection between Gol Yisrael? So Taisa said, Vishahir, Rishain Linit Salen. He was the first one that was saved by Hashem, Shenitzel, and Nimrod. He was saved from the fiery furnace by Nimrod. That's why it's appropriate to mention Avram Avinu in Goyal Yisrael. Hashem was the f- Avram was the first one saved by Hashem, and likewise we are in de- desperate need of a Geul. So Hashem will respond to Avram Avinu Bar Maria, who Yana Eschem, who will respond to you, Vishma Bekol Tzakaschem, and will hear out your uh, in-depth, desperate tefillah. For Hashem said, Tzaka is a deeper form of tefillah. Medrash brings ten l'shenis of tefillah. Tzaka is a deeper, more desperate form of tefillah. Hashem will listen to you and respond to you, Hayim Azeh, Baruch Goyal Yisrael. So this is an expanded bracha, although it doesn't really count as one of the extra brachas. V'heinan in Achrav, Amen. The Tzibur responds, Amen. The Chazan Aknesses. Now the Shamas, the attendant, gets up and he says, Oyem Alem, he turns to the Kahanim, Tiku b'nei Aaron, Tiku, blow the shayf. V'choyze v'oymer. Now, we're up to the next bracha, the first of the extra six, which is Zichroinais. So he has all the psukum of Zichroinais. And then he's nearing the end of that bracha, this is the Shleich Tzibur, back to the Shleich Dechazim. V'chayzev Oymer, and he goes and says, Mishu'ana sa'veseinu al Yamsuf. So now he concludes Zechroinitz by making mention of our forefathers standing by the Yamsuf. And Rashi Toysus explained, they were sort of forgotten. Or so it at least appeared, forgotten throughout the years of Golas, and Hashem remembered them. That's why it's connected to Zechroinitz. Hashem who responded to Aveseinu al Yamsuf, hu yane eschem, he will respond to you as well. Vishma b'kal tzakaschem, ayim azeh, baruch, Zeich and Ishkach, Hashem remembers the forgotten things. So this is the Shteach Tzibur. Ve'enu in Achrav Amen, the Tzibur responds with an Amen. Ve'chazan Aknesses. Now once again it's the Chazan, the Shamas, the attendants, uh, turn to get up and say, Oymer Lam, he turns to the Kehanim, with instructions. Hariu, b'ni iron Hariu. Blow the Shefer. Now, in contrast to the previous time where he said, Tiku, b'ni iron Tiku, which was referring to a Tkia, true a Tkia, here he says Hariu. But the iron Hariu, Rashi explains, because here it's in the reverse. It's Trua, Tkia, Trua, for whatever reason. I switch it around, and they alternate back and forth. V'chein b'chol bracha bracha. Likewise, throughout the next few brachas, Ba'achas Omer Tiku. During one bracha, there is Tiku. Ba'achas Omer Hariu. By the other bracha, it's Hariu. So they alternate. Ba'med v'amarun b'gvul. When do we have this concept of answering Amen? Only outside the Migdash. I will be Migdash, but in the Migdash, Einaikein. They did many things differently. Three things were changed. Firstly, there's no Amen. There's no Amen in the Middash. Rather, they say, Baruch Shem Kweid Machusu Ilamed, which is a more elaborate acknowledgement, which is apropos for the Makama Mishkan, Makama Shechina, where Hashem's Shechina was visible. Shem Kweid Machusu Ilamed. How do we know there's no Amen in the Middash? Shnemar. This is by Ezra. Where they were benching Hashem in the Mikdash, and he says, Kumu Baruch Hashem Lekechem, bless Hashem, Mino Ilum Ado from this world to the next world, for you Baruch Hashem Kweidecha, they will acknowledge by being a Baruch Hashem's shame, Hashem's presence, Hashem's revelation, Umaraimam Al Kobrachos Ilah Hashem is beyond all bracha and all praise. So we learn that Amin doesn't suffice. You have to respond. To Hashem's name with a more elaborate praise. Baruch Shem Kvoid Machus Ilamvad. Now, the words of Muraimam al Kobrachos Ila can perhaps lead one to think that there's only one acknowledgement for all brachas in the Middle. So you have a list of 20 brachas, you wait till the end, you say Baruch Shem Kvoid Machus Ilamvad, which is a general acknowledgement regarding Hashem's presence, Hashem's Shechina, Hashem's praise, Hashem's loftiness and His glory. All one acknowledgement for all the brachas. 
Yochel al kol a bracha is kulan. Perhaps in reference to all the brachas, you only have letei el tila achas, one acknowledgement, one baruch shem. Bracha is a specific thing. Baruch this, baruch that. Perhaps you need one general acknowledgement for all. Tamalayma. No, the pasuk says umreimam al kol brachos ilam. We learn al kol bracha for every bracha. Tain loy sehila. So initially the Gemara figures, Vivoch Hashem Kvedecha, etc. It's one Baruch, it's one Baruch Shem for everything. And then we focus on the words, I'll call Baruch Hashem which is a specific instruct to give a Tehila for every specific Baruch. Ve'el of Amigdash Ma'u Oimer, so what then do we say in the Amigdash, if not, Amen? So firstly, the Mavarech will be more elaborate. You see, you can't have an acknowledgement which is which is um, more prominent than the bracha itself. So the bracha itself had to be prolonged and uh, made more flowery, so to speak. So the Mavarach says, Baruch Hashem Lekim Elke Yisrael, Min O'ilam Ad O'ilam, Baruch Goyal Yisrael. Instead of simply Baruch Goyal Yisrael, you say, Baruch Hashem Lekim Elke Yisrael, etc. Now this is this elaborate response as well. Ve'inan Achrav, Baruch Shem Fein Machus O'ilam Ba'at. So he finished Goyal Yisrael, now it's the Chazan's turn. The Chazan again means the Sham, it's the attendant. The Chazan Knesset turns to the Kehanim. Now, this is another change that took place in the English. We already had two changes. The Mavarech elaborates. The respondents elaborate. Baruch Shem. Now we have a third change. The Chazan, after instructing for those Tkiyos, he reviews, he summarizes. He gives a quick synopsis of the, of the theme. Of that bracha, b'chayzim ba'imer mishana as Avram bar Maria who yane eschem v'yishma b'kol tzakas chamayimase. So three things happen in the midrash that didn't happen outside the midrash. Firstly, a longer bracha, baruch Hashem al keisol minoyel ad oilam, baruch al Yisrael. Secondly, baruch Hashem koyin achusa instead of amen. And thirdly, the attendant will make a quick review of the topic at hand. Now up to the next bracha. Zichroinus, he mentioned all the psukim. Now he's up to the chasim. So once again he says, Baruch Hashem Lekei Yisrael, Rav Ben Oilam Ad Oilam, etc. Zeich HaNishkachis. Ve'inenim Achrov, everybody responds with a Baruch Shem. Kvayt Machusoy, Lailam Ba'at. The Chazan HaKnesses gets up again, the Chazan HaKnesses Oimer Lehem, Hariu, HaKayana, Bnei An Hariu, etc. etc. Ve'chein, Bechol Brocha Brocha, this repeats itself throughout all those brachas. Ba'achas Oimer Tiku, by one he says the word tiku, b'achas im haru, the other one haru, as we explained, the sequence of blows switch around. Atcha goimer as kulon until he finishes all those extra brachas. So this was in the Mikdash, bekach hinig, Rabbi Chalafta b'tzipayri. In the town of Tzipayri, Rabbi Chalafta decided, I'm going to uh, apply all these changes, all these extra features that were featured in the Mikdash, I'm going to have it in my town as well. Rabbi Hanania ben Tradi ben Sichni. Hanania ben Tradi applied this thing in Sichni as well. When uh, this reached the Chacham, Amru they said no. These uh, additional features are only meant to be done in the Harabais, where you enter Shar Mizrach. In any case, it's a Migdash related concept, not meant to be applied elsewhere. Okay, so we have a, a full description of what happened. In the Migdash and outside during Yemei Atanis. Vis the Amrik the Sanya. Others had a slightly different uh, version, very slight, uh, slightly different, not, not much. Uh, pretty much a very similar Bryce, almost word for word, describing the Tfilis and Brachis of the Yemei Atanis. Oimr of name Esrim Abba Brachis. So the Shtech Tzibur gets up, presents 24 Brachis. Shmoin Esrish Abachal Yom, 18 standard. Umoisev Alein Oit Shesh adds another 6. Oisun Shesh. Heichen Oimra, and where would he put those six? Bein Goyel, between the Brach of Goyel, L'Raifei Choyle. Umarach Pikul, before he gets to the six, he expands and prolongs the Brach of Goyel Yisrael, which is the topic of the day, Goyel Yisrael. Vein and Nachav Amen. Alko Bracha Bracha, and they respond with an Amen. This is outside the Miklash. V'kacha Yunoigim Begvulin, that's how it took place outside the Miklash. Av of the Miklash, but in the Miklash things were different. Now, before we continue, the Karen Oyer points out, that there is one difference between this price and the previous one. It appears that this price left out blowing shafer, big vulin. In the previous price that we had blowing the shafer even outside the Midrash, it appears that this price leaves it out, that there is no tkiya shafer outside the Midrash. Okay, that's the only difference 
It appears to be the only difference between this price and the previous one. Avo b'migdash show you aimen, but in the migdash they would have many changes. Firstly, the bracha was a longer one. Baruch Hashem l'kei Yisrael min oilam adoilam. Baruch Hashem Yisrael. Number two, v'lo yihayu aynen achar of amen. There was no amen. Koka chlama, why? Yishayin aynen amen b'migdash. There's no amen in the migdash. Umanayin shayin aynen amen b'migdash. How do we know that amen doesn't suffice in the migdash? He's something more elaborate. Shanemar. Kumu baruch Hashem l'kei min oilam. Vada oilam b'vach Hashem k'voydecha. Mareimah malka bracha osilam. We learned that a kol bracha bracha. Tein lo yisei hila. It's not just enough to uh, slightly acknowledge, nod your head, say amen. You have to actually express it with the phrase Baruch Shem Kwa Nachusilam Tanarabanan. Some take out the word Tanarabanan because it's one continuous price. So let's go through the brachas again. Allah Rishayna Su Aymer Baruch Hashem Alake Yisro Mena Oilam Adoilam Baruch Goyal Yisro. That's the first extended bracha. Veino in Akhra Baruch Shem Kwa Nachusilam Vayal. Of course, this is in the Mikdash. The Chazna Knes says, and the Shamis gets up and he says, Aymer. Tiku kahanim tiku v'choyz v'ayim, and then he repeats the theme. Misha ano savra bar Maria, who yane eschem v'yishma b'kol tzakaschem ayimazeh. Well, Ashnei v'aymer, and now we're up to the second bracha. Zichroynes. So he says the psukim, and now he's nearing the conclusion. V'aymer baruch Hashem al keis shol min oilam adoilam baruch zeichan shkachos ve'inu nachra baruch Hashem koid machusoi leilam vod. The Chazna Knesses and the Shamas once again gets up. Oimer Hariu instead of Tiku. Now he says Hariu Bnei Aaron Hariu because it's true at Kia true. Vayimer he repeats the theme of that particular bracha by saying Mishana Savasir Al Yamsuf Hu Yane Eschem VeYishma BeKotz Hakaschem Hayoy Maza Vei Mariim BeToiken Mariim. It appears that they would blow after he would uh, repeat the theme. Interesting. Vechem BeChal Bracha Bracha and the same thing applied throughout all those brachas. They would alternate. Ba'achas oimer tiku. By one, he would say the word tiku. Ba'achas oimer hariu. Atchayig mokal esa brachas kulon until he completes all those additional brachas. This was in the Migdash. However, Rakhim the Yigar Machalaf the Bitzipayri. Rabbi Chanani meant try the Bitzichni. These Chachamim applied these practices in their respective towns. Uksha Badava it's a Chachamim. When the word reached the Chachamim, Amru they opposed. Lo Yehoyim Noigin Kain Ela B'Shair Mizrach Barabbais. This is specifically for the Beis Hamikdash. Rabbi Do Aimer, lo yehi yitzurach leim zechreinus. Rabbi Do substitutes zechreinus and sheifros with other psukim, as we learned in the Mishnah. What's wrong with zechreinus and sheifros? On a fast, Rabbi Ada, the min Yafri, Rabbi Ada from the town of Yafri explains my time with Rabbi Yud. What's his reason? Lishein Aimrim zechreinus v'sheifros. The only time you meant to say zechreinus and sheifros are during these specific occasions. El Abreish Hashana. As we learned in the Gemara Shoshana, you may remember, Imru Lefanei Malchis, Zechronis Veshoifers, the Maratav Tezayin says, we learn from Psukim, it's specific to Rosh Hashanah. Ubi Yoivlois, this was Yom Kippur, Rosh Nasayevil as well, we connected to Rosh Hashanah, or we had that at the end of the Masechta, through Exer Shava, Shvi Shvi, Mushas Muhammad during wartime as well. The Pasuk says, when there'll be a war, Chas Veshoim, we have to call out to Hashem. And the Torah Evan says, Rashi says, Leyadina, uh, I'm not sure, where we see Zechronis and Shafers, Tur Evan suggests that perhaps it's because the Pasuk there says that during a time of Milchama, you'll call out to Hashem with a Shafer and you'll be even in Skartem, you'll be remembered to Hashem Latoiva. So that alludes to the concept of Zechronis to evoke our true uh, core essence, which is beloved by to Hashem. And the concept of Shafer says Tur Evan is because they use Shafers at that point, so it's appropriate to say Psukim and a Bracha. That covers the topic of Shafers as well. So, Dafka during these times, Rosh Hashanah, Yevil, and Muhammad, but not during a fast. So, what do we learn today? We start Rechayiv, Teva, Sakim, Efer, Efer, Kvura, Maria. We discuss the reason why they go out to the Rechayiv, to Mechaper, through the Bezayin, through Gullus. We take the Teva out to the Rechayiv to show, look, look what we did through our various with Mavaza there in a Kodesh. And that brings to Vidu and to Tshuva. We put the afer on the Aron Kodesh to show that Hashem participates in our hardships. We put afer on our own heads to show our worthlessness and to be masker after Shal Yitzchak, the Messiah's Nefesh of Yitu Hashem. We visit the Beis HaKvaris to show where Chashev Kemesim brings about the Shuva or to be Mo'irer Rachem, Sheyivakshu Aleinu Mesim Rachem. We learned the definition of Hara Maria. Yaitzi Harali Yisro, or a broad murder of Kechavim. We learned about this person who's going to be Ma'ira de Tzibor, going to speak to them and inspire them. So either it's going to be a Zakan who is a Chacham, 
or just a plain chacham, or at least an adam shel tzura, a person who can make the proper impression. What about the anshe ninve, where Hashem focused on their internal changes rather than external external things? What about making sure to get rid of that sheretz before jumping into the mikvah, letting go of the averis before doing teshuva? What about the qualities that are necessary for the um, for the shliach tzibur? Learned about the Shliach Tzibur, having internal consistency with his external presentation. We learned about the six extra brachas, and the Gemara was machalish that even Goyil Yisrael was a rather longer bracha, although it was not part of the six. So we have a total of seven, perhaps there's some significance to seven. Seven is a, a number of importance, seven days of the week, etc. So there was a point to have seven longer, longer brachas, even though we only added technically six extra brachas. We conclude Rabbi Yehuda, then instead of Zechariah and Shafras, we do other psukim because these were unique to Hashanah Yevil and Shas Macham. Much Hatzlachatiu, all the best.